I wanted to make a, a video talking about how I made my demo doll. I'll walk through that with you so you can see how I make a demo doll that I use for practicing baby wearing. A demo doll is great because unlike just using like a stuffed animal, it's actually weighted. Um, legs kind of act like uh, baby legs. It has some weight to the bum. has a little bit of a floppy head so you know, you know, about how much support to be looking for with the, the top edge of your wrap, stuff like that. Sometimes it's nice to have actual legs to work around. Uh, it gets a little more realistic, especially when you're trying to remember the passes of what passes go under legs or over legs, stuff like that. This is the doll I have right now. This is a 20 inch doll. I got this from Walmart for $10. Uh, that's US dollars. I have about five pounds worth of weight in this baby, uh, mostly in the bum, a little bit in the legs bit in the hands, a little bit in the face, but most of it's right here. This works really well for practicing and much more affordable than commercial demo dolls, which tend to go for more like 150 plus. So here's my doll that I'm using. Like I said, about 20 inches long, about the same size as an average newborn. This is the My Sweet Love brand that I bought at Walmart. In the US, again, uh, just under $10 before tax might change a little bit in your area, but in general, the most affordable doll that I have found for this purpose. This is a onesie just to show newborn size onesie, newborn size doll. So if you want to redress this, it will fit standard newborn size clothes. The other materials that I need for this project, the most important things are a 11 inch zip tie. That's what you need because dolls that have a soft body and a firm head and extremities, the head is held on with a zip tie. And so 11 inches should be just enough to get around there to replace that because we're going to have to clip the existing zip tie to remove the head. So content warning, if watching a pretend baby doll's head be removed is going to be unpleasant for you. This is not the tutorial for you to watch. Please don't. Little wire cutters to get that zip tie off. Nothing fancy. And then these are optional, but these are some mismatched socks from my laundry. This is just to keep whatever I'm using for weight kind of distributed where I want it. And then you need something to weight the doll. I have a pile of random rocks. Some of these came from my yard. Some of these came from a rock painting party. And then you also want something smaller. For my last doll, I used metal BBs for like a BB gun. For this one, I have some decorative glass marbles from the dollar store. Just use whatever you've got laying around. A bag of rice could work, gravel from your yard. Don't worry about going and buying something expensive to fill this doll with. I also find it helpful to have a food scale because you don't want to weight the doll so heavy that it's going to be um, a strain on the seams of the doll, but you don't want it so light that it's not worth practicing with. So I usually aim for about five pounds. That's not as heavy as a newborn, typically but it's a good balance. First thing you're gonna do is strip your, your doll naked. So we're gonna start by finding the end of that zip tie and you're gonna clip this end off, get under it. I need terrible wire cutters. Ah. There we go. So as you can see, just regular zip tie holding that together. So this is trash now. So now head is completely hollow. Body is full of stuffing. Remove all the polyfill stuffing. Keep this and use it to restuff the doll after you weight it.
It's hard for me to show on the camera, but these uh, hands and legs also are hollow. They have a hole into the body. So depending on the size of what you're using as your smaller weights, you should be able to get some weight inside there as well. I've got an empty husk of a doll and a pile of stuffing. I'm going to start by seeing if my little marbles are going to fit into the leg holes because I honestly don't know. Boop. Just barely. I think I'm going to use about most of one of these bags just for the feet because I like the feet to have a decent amount of weight. Feel those? Yeah, they look about, they feel about the same. I am actually going to weight the feet. I also want to weight the thighs a little bit. So what I'm going to try with this one is just putting a thighs worth of gravel into those legs. And then I'm going to sew, th this part is totally optional, I'm going to sew some lines above and below that to try and keep that in place and see if that X at all like a knee joint. This project is very open to experimentation. Socks add a little bit of cushion to using gravel as well as keeping everything in one spot. So I'm just gonna take out a kind of thigh length rock. Knock the end just to keep it from going anywhere. Turn that end inside out over it. There we go. So now I've got rock and a sock. Into that thigh area. I might not end up sewing up by the hip. I think I'll just sew with any thigh sized rock. Sure, that one. That'll go in that thigh. Now I'm going to fill out those thighs with some fluff. I now have this filled up to the hips. I'm going to put one more little ball in there to cushion the bum before I weight the bum. So now there's little a little bit in the bum. Okay, now I need my big sock. This is where most of the weight's coming in. Big sock, full of rocks. I weighed out about four and a half pounds worth of rocks, and I want most of them right here. Again, the sock is gonna add some cushion but it's also just going to keep those rocks from moving around inside the doll and straining the seams of the doll because it's going to work all as move all as one unit instead of one rock pushing on a seam somewhere. Sock full of rocks. In hindsight, it might have been easier to put the sock inside the doll before filling it full of rocks. So now I'm going to try to position that sock of rocks down as low down and even, like right now it's sitting a little crooked, shift those rocks around. Okay, so it's sitting down low, as close to the back as possible, and now we're going to stuff all the way up to the armpits. Try to get stuffing around the front and back as well so you don't have a noticeably lumpy child that you're wrapping. You don't have to wait 
the arms and the hands of the doll if you don't want to. These are not important aspects of realistic wrapping, but I like to anyway. And then some stuffing in the arms. We'll keep those in place. You may or may not use reuse all of your stuffing. I try to use as much of it as possible to get as firm and plush a doll as possible. Right now, I have a doll. You can't see the scale numbers, so you don't have to take my word for it. That weighs four pounds, four ounces, about two kilograms. So I'm going to aim for closer to five pounds, about 2.3 kilograms ish. About five. It's not an exact science. Um, I do like weighting the head a little bit, especially towards the front of the face, because it does simulate the uh, head flop of a newborn and it helps you practice getting the neck support along the back of their neck. I'm going to use another sock for this. I'm going to learn from my mistake and go ahead and put the sock inside the head first. This is where most of the rest of my gravel is going. Doesn't need to be a lot, but that was almost a pound of weight. Probably a little unnecessary, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot this. And before this doll was completely hollow, all the stuffing was in the body. What I'm going to do is position the head face down so that the sock full of rocks is sitting towards the face. And then I'm going to use the rest of the stuffing in the head to keep that sock on the front side of the face. Okay. So I've got one pound, four ounces, or almost 600 grams. The body is four pounds, four ounces. So I've got about five and a half pounds into the stall now, which is perfect. It's going to be about two and a half kilograms, which is excellent for practicing. Now, this head's going to go right back in here, and the zip tie goes through this channel. So I'm going to get that zip tie in place first. Got my new zip tie. That's 11 inches, like 20-ish centimeters. I'm just going to thread that through. It goes through pretty easily. I'm going to go ahead and click this onto the first teeth. If I click that under the first teeth of the zip tie so it's locked now, I can still get the head in. I'm going to work. There's a channel around the neck and I am going to make sure the head is on the right way and work that zip tie into the front side of the channel all the way around and gently hold it in place and tighten that zip tie, making sure it's tightening into that channel. Once you tighten a zip tie, it does not loosen. So make sure it's in place as you're tightening. Get it as tight as possible. Check it. And then you do need these again. Clip the end off. This is a little bit of a rough edge, so you may want to take a file or some sandpaper to that. Just as a reminder, at this point, for all legal and safety reasons, this is no longer a child's toy. It would not pay, pass safety testing to be a toy uh, between the extra weight and all that. 
So just know that this is now an adult tool for baby wearing practice. Just wanted to throw that out there. At this point, you can redress your doll if you want. One thing that I want to add, like I said before, is I want to add stitching just to help make sure that that knee bends along the knee. So my goal is to have a straight line of stitching across the knee to create a little bit of a hinge, kind of squeezing that. I have a rock inside the thigh, so I'm kind of squeezing that up to make sure I'm not sewing through a rock for reasons. And I want to make sure that I kind of go right in line with the back of the knee. So I might actually see if I can do this face down. My last one, I added these seams, but I also did it by hand. So I have no idea how much my machine is going to hate me for this. Let's find out. So that was a hard pass from my machine. It says no. So instead, what I'm going to do is pin this along that seam. And after I get this pinned, I'm going to hand sew it. There's one. So you can see the one. This one is pinned, so it makes the difference a little less obvious. But you can see it now has like a hinge that it wants to swing along that line, which gives it a little bit more of a knee that's going to act like a knee. And I'm going to do the same thing with this leg. Naked demo doll. Little cha cha knees. That rock in the thigh kind of acted the way I wanted it to, so it's kind of naturally bending at the hip as well. Which worked out well. So I'm going to redress this. And ta da! I now have two demo dolls, but you could have one. <laughs> um, I hope that little walkthrough was helpful for anyone interested in making their own demo doll. I find a demo doll really nice for learning new carries just because I can work my way through the passes mentally several times before I have to deal with my daughter's impatience. Back carries, they're a little tricky for back carries just because of their size, but they're still good for practicing. So you may notice when you try back carries that as anyone who has tried to wrap a small baby on their back has noticed, they are very hard to reach because they're the dado. But in general, just be a little forgiving of yourself with the seat making process because of how hard they are to reach. But you can still, you kind of have to watch out as you sink down, but it's a good way to make sure you're monitoring a kid's airway. Just make sure when you're wrapping a real baby, you don't just grab their head and lift them out of the wrap like that. Don't do that with a real baby. But in general, it's hard to make a seat on the back with them, but you get the idea and you can get the feel for the passes. Hey, that side looks pretty good. Um, and they're good for practice. I hope that helped someone. Happy wrapping. <laughs>